Hey, it's Sarah with Loaves and Dishes, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super easy bruschetta. So I bought some already sliced Italian bread from the grocery store. You don't have to buy it pre-sliced. You could buy unsliced bread. I felt like this was easier, and then I didn't have to cut it. And I'm going to put that in the oven for just a few minutes, just enough to toast it. I put some olive oil and some salt and pepper on the, on the bread. And now for my um, bruschetta, I guess, I don't know if it's a topping, I don't know what you call this part, but I took a whole carton of cherry tomatoes and I cut those up. And um, if, it, if they were bigger, I cut them up so that they were fairly small. You could just cut them in half, it's really up to you. Uh, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to look pretty. And then I got some basil and I did a special kind of cut called a chiffonade. And once I get done pulling all of the leaves off of the basil, I'm going to show you how to do this. So you stack your basil leaves up. You want them all facing the same direction. And then once you get a stack of a couple basil leaves, if you haven't ever done this before, I would start with just a couple, like two or three. But I've, this is, I used to have to do this a whole bunch when I worked in the kitchen. And then you roll them up. And then you're just gonna uh, cut. You wanna make really thin slices and it will make little ribbons of basil. And so, so if you've ever wondered how they chop up little basil ribbons, <laughs> this is how. Um, and so really, and you can see, it's just a really, it's called a chiffonade. Um, but again, it doesn't have to be pretty. You could just chop up the basil if you wanted to. Um, but if you haven't done this before, I would, I really would recommend starting with just a couple leaves. The thicker you stack them, the harder it is to roll up and, you know. And it doesn't matter which way you roll them. You could roll them lengthwise, you can roll them widthwise, it doesn't matter. So I put half of my basil in and I saved the other half to put on the top. Although I forgot to put it on the top on the video. Then I took one pretty small shallot and I am slicing that up really, really thinly. And then in my bowl, I'm adding one, a couple tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Um, you can add as much or as little as you'd like. And then I added some salt and pepper. And the salt is really important. Tomatoes, I don't know what it is about tomatoes, but they just absorb salt in it like you just don't taste it. So you need to add a little bit more salt than you think you did than you do. Um, I'm also putting in some fresh garlic. Now, I will say, uh, fresh garlic like this is a little spicy. Um, so if you're not interested in that, don't add it. Um, and I think I went a little too heavy. I added four, clo four or five cloves. Uh, I added less than I opened up. Um, but it, ours was a little, it was a little spicy, uh, you know. It was good. I liked it, but if you're if you don't if you're not into that, then I would leave. I would only add maybe one or two cloves of garlic, and that is the only time that you will ever hear me say only add one or two cloves of garlic. <laughs> Most of the time, I'm uh, I'm like add a whole bulb, <laughs> add seventeen cloves of garlic, um, but I, I would I would be conservative on the garlic for this one, but. You know, it tasted good either way. The the little spicy kick was nice. So, I love this garlic press. I, I think I've talked about it in almost every video, but I just absolutely love it. <laughs> and so, I've got everything in my bowl, and I'm going to give this a little mix. And you know, if you wanted to make this even more fun, you could add some feta cheese and some black olives. It would make it a completely different deal. I don't even know if that would be considered a bruschetta anymore, but it's, you know, it sounds good. Um, so I'm going to take my tomato mixture and I've, I got my little pieces of bread out of the oven. They're nice and toasty. And I'm just going to spoon some of this tomato mixture on top of these. Uh, it's going to be messy. It's not, it's not going to be pretty. Just FYI. <laughs> uh, that's part of what makes it fun is it's a little messy, a little messy to eat. I was trying really hard to keep them on top of the little the little pieces of bread, but then it just wasn't working, and so then I just started dumping them on the plate. You know, they're going to fall off anyways. Why not get all of the tomatoes on the plate? So 
So this recipe is great for um, summer parties. Like if you're doing a party where you're just doing some finger foods and stuff, this is a, an excellent finger food. Um, and you could add you could add some like pancetta or even just some bacon to it. It would be really good. So I added a little salt and pepper on top, and now I have I have some balsamic glaze in my pantry, which I really recommend just getting some balsamic glaze. You never know when you need it. And I drizzled some on top, and then I also put some uh, truffle oil on it as well. But if you want to see more recipes like these, check out lovesanddishes.net. If you want to hear more from myself and my mom, we do have a podcast. It's called Dorks with Sporks, and you can find that wherever you listen to podcasts. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. We're putting out a new video every Monday through Friday, and you can follow us on Facebook at Loves and Dishes for more. Thanks for watching.